welcome back to another Dead by Daylight video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing a new game mode that I think would have a regularly shifting meta, not only because survivors and killers will be forced to choose less than meta perks, but also because new chapters will force the meta to change as three new perks are added for survivor and killer every quarter. I'm proposing a competitive draft mode. For those of you unfamiliar with draft modes in other games, here's a quick rundown. In draft mode, both teams take turns banning and choosing certain items in a game. A limited number of bans happen before any picks are made, but once picks start, bans are mixed in to keep picks changing. Both teams have to choose their picks strategically around who the other team is playing and what the other team is picking and banning. Draft mode usually comes with two different side benefits for games. The first is that once something is chosen, it's no longer able to be picked by anyone else. This, along with strategic bans, forces players to look for non-meta perks that they can work with that usually translates in a change in the non-competitive meta of the game's other modes. The second is that whenever a character or ability becomes an issue in draft mode, it's usually quickly addressed and balanced by the devs who strive for good competitive play. Some of the complaints to address is that you'll hear people say the same perks will be banned every time. And this is a fair argument. But as most draft modes prove, once players no longer have access to their full array of meta builds, they'll find new, powerful builds that their opponents will have to react to and overcome. This forces different bans, different builds, and an ever-changing meta. With that bit of explanation out of the way, let me explain how I think a draft mode in Dead by Daylight would work. To enter draft mode, you would simply choose it as your option of game type beyond the standard play mode. Draft mode would come in both unranked for practicing and ranked for the attempt of gaining ranks and rewards each season. When the queue ends and you are put into a game, the map that game will be played on will be displayed and announced first, and remain displayed in the background during the draft. Once everyone else loads in, the draft goes as follows. First, a random survivor is chosen as the team leader. This player is in charge of choosing the bands that the other players suggest. Next, both sides get two bands to begin with. The survivor team bans first each time. Third, survivors ban one perk and then the killer bans another perk. After that, the survivor team picks their first character. Whenever a character is chosen, they also get to pick a single perk. Players get 30 seconds to choose their characters and perks. It should be noted that once a perk is chosen, no other player can choose that perk. It is locked out entirely. After the first survivor is chosen, next the killer picks their character and perk. After the killer's chosen his character and perk, the survivor team picks two more characters and their individual perks. After that, the next wave of bands comes and the killer chooses first this time. Two bands are chosen this time as well. Finally, the last survivor chooses their character and perk. From here, the killer will get additional bands in between survivors choosing their perks. This is to compensate for the amount of enemy players and the amount of choices and options that the survivors have giving the killer some additional power in the draft that they would normally not have in a normal game. The rest of the draft goes as follows. First, the killer picks their next perk and then bans a perk. Then, all four survivors choose a perk. The survivors will get a total of 30 seconds each of these times to pick a perk based on the order they were chosen by the game to begin with. After that, the killer picks and bans a perk, the survivors choose a perk, back to the killer to pick and ban a perk, and then, finally, the survivors pick their final perk. Once the draft has finished, the players are given 30 seconds to equip add-ons, equipment, and offerings in what is called the loadout phase. All forms of equipment, add-ons, and offerings will be available at this time, but the rarity and level of each one is worth a certain amount of points. The lower quality of each option will cost fewer points, while higher level options will cost more. Each player will only have 10 points to spend in this manner each game. Common items, add-ons, and offerings cost 2 points each. Uncommon costs 3 points each. Rares cost 4 points each. Very rares cost 6 points each. And ultra rare cost 8 points each. This method forces a power balance where equipment available is completely equal, but the method one spends on them is up to the individual. Two items that are not available in draft mode are keys and mores. This is because draft modes are all about strategic choices and highly balanced gameplay and keys and mores completely ignore these aspects of the game. Survivors also won't be able to find keys in chests in draft mode. The fact that killers can lose a game because of RNG from chests isn't balanced, and so that means that aspect has to go. Anyway, once the 30 seconds for the loadout phase is up, 
the game's loading screen begins. Now that you know how I think the draft mode would go, let me show you how I think it could look while I do a mock draft with the members of the coven. Alright, so Nathan is chosen as leader. So, corrupt intervention. Okay. For starters. Right. The anti-tickle party. And yeah. barbecue and chili. And the killer's banned his. I'm thinking we still we go with Nurse's Calling. Nurse's Calling's pretty solid. But... I'm thinking I that's like... a good one to... Any objections? No, uh, I like my tickle parties. I... <laughs> I've never Nurse seen King. a killer use Nurse's Calling outside of, like, purple or, like, yellow ranks, so... It depends on the build, in all fairness, and the killer. Well, I mean, if we... That? Do we want Nurse's, then? Nurse's Calling. Okay. Cheryl and... Uh, I'm gonna still go with Spine Chill. I should be Doctor again. I would probably cry, honestly. <laughs> as long as we don't get uh, Hillbilly, I'm good. Legion! Legion! Uh... Okay, I can do a Legion. Oh, easy. I was gonna say, I can deal with a Legion. I'm gonna be annoying and be, um, flawed. You didn't get a perk. It doesn't matter, just... <laughs> no, Kindred. I actually want Fang, and I want Desperate Measures. The Natophobia is worthless now because they just made it, they nerfed it into the ground. Yeah, it's not really worth picking. I mean, on Legion, he, he can kind of get some value out of it, but still. Discordance is trash. Mom. Um, not right, go. I mean, right now it's not, but... It will be. I'm I'm banning, I'm banning Blood Echo. Blood Echo? Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna go with Yui. Yeah. As far as the perk goes, it's inner strength. Fiber? Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with life. Life, alright. Mel? Is it leadership? The one that helps everybody else out? Yeah. Around you? Yeah. Are you talking about leader or prove thyself? Do you want to help you or everyone else? Everyone else. So that's prove thyself, yeah. I'll take balance. Honest are we allowed to suggest things for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you are. It's a honestly it's a I would I would I would go with head on with I would go with head on paired with inner strength. Yeah, it's probably good. I run that all the time, and it's a pretty good combo move, honestly. <laughs> yeah, who else gets found in the locker more? <laughs> I'm thinking I should pick Borrowed Time. Does anybody else have an issue with that if I go with Borrowed Time? I'm not thinking it. Nope. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Well, I just wanted, I was asking before I was asking. I don't know, what would be good? Calm Spirit would be good. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna be Especially when injured he's most got of the time. yelling for. I do. I think that's like looking quiet. Let me head on. What are we trying We're to... fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a lucky break. Now you might want visionary because you basically can see all generators within a radius if one hasn't been completed within so much time. Done. <laughs> She's like, got it, bam. <laughs> I'm directionally <laughs> channeling, and that will okay. help me. I don't want dance with. Uh, I want bond actually. Break down to the bond. Yeah. Unbreakable. There we go. Unbreakable. Yep. There we go. And that's the draft mode portion of the game. As you can see, the first two rounds of bans before picks were trying to lock down powerful meta perks. And once the first few picks were made and the killer was revealed, bans and perk choices were made based on where they would be playing and who they would be playing against. The last two rounds of perk picks were especially telling with perks like Lucky Break, Breakdown, and Unbreakable acknowledging Legion's standard late game. 
You can also see where each player's strengths are in the builds, with Crafty bringing in more cooperative perks and the Lambdun bringing in things that could be more chase oriented, while Wolf Girl Strike and myself brought in builds that allowed for a bit more flexibility. The killer banned typical meta perks to begin with, then began to adapt their bands to compensate for their power and for the flexibility of the survivor's choices. But this was just a simple example draft. Some killers like Hillbilly, Nurse, or Oni may not care about things like Sprint Burst, but will want to ban Unbreakable. Doctor players may wish to first round ban Calm Spirit to make sure everyone will scream when he uses his power. On the flip side, some survivors may not care about Nurse's Calling if they know they're facing the plague, or will be sure to get someone to pick Spine Chill if they know they're playing against Ghostface. But one thing you were able to see is that each survivor was able to create a build according to their playstyle even without some of the top meta perks that could still be used to deal with the killer they were going up against. And as survivors and killers begin to create and discover new builds, those builds will create new metas which will create new band choices. And the cycle repeats itself as new band choices creates new builds, which creates new metas, which creates new bands, etc, etc, etc. People would start out using their current game knowledge to try and draft and ban, but the fact that the new builds and synergies would come from the perks picked in a draft mode means that the most decent perks would eventually become available again, or still chosen because the killer can't ban them all. One thing I'm sure you noticed was that survivors get 4 bans while the killers get 8 bans. This is to allow the killer to have a better chance when going up against survivors and have the ability to better compete on a more level playing field. Since the killer only gets to choose 4 perks while the survivors get 16, allowing the killer to have more bans puts them on equal footing. When you consider that the killers currently have access to 75 perks while survivors currently have access to 83 perks, the killer's extra bans actually brings both teams to have access to a total of 67 perks each, so that actually helps to balance things out. I hope this mode piques your interest, and I hope to see some discussion in the comments below on how it could be tweaked to be better but I genuinely think that this mode could help push Dead by Daylight's playability, balance, and competitive side. If you enjoyed the idea and the video, please consider giving it a like and sharing it with others to spread the conversation around the Dead by Daylight community. But I hope you all enjoyed the video, I hope you all have a great day, and as always, stay positive.